intimate, haptic, and um, ambiguous. Uh, I chose intimate because, um, you know, like the, the tight cropping that I use, um, the kind of strange angles, and the fact that these figures are often shown like first person or in a really um, like close-up way. Um, and on top of that, it's showing you know, these really intimate moments that someone has with themselves or, uh, you know, whenever they're kind of probing their bodies. Um, haptic because not only the surface of the paper, I've created like this really haptic um, textural, uh, you know, surface, but um, also I, I want to reference the, the body and how haptic it can be. Um, all those, you know, dimples and puckers and things like that that happen. Um, and ambiguous because sometimes uh, the way that I've, you know, negotiated the, the contrast of the image and, and uh, the way that I've cropped it, sometimes it looks a little more like abstract. This body of work, because it, it really has, um, I don't know, I, I feel like before this I was making things that were still personal, but they didn't mean as much, they were like too personal. Whereas I think this can kind of reach a wider audience, and I think I, I brought it into like this you know, contemporary um, context where uh, it feels more important and it feels more direct and, and more uh, I don't know, prevalent right now. Um, stuff I was making before was not necessarily that; it was more about like family and, and home, and I think that stuff's really important. But I wasn't like reaching. Um, into like the depths of it, and I, I don't think I was reaching other people. So I guess this body of work. Um, that being said, I think um, I think going forward, it's just going to get better. Um, I think I think it's really hard to define outsider. Uh, it's really empirical. You know, it's based on each individual's experience, but I think it can you know man manifest itself uh, mentally and physically. So. Um, some people, they might be feeling like an outsider physically just based on like appearance, so um, you know, skin color or different kinds of features, um, things like that. And then there's, you know, the, the mental side of feeling like an outsider where it's more invisible. It could be like a, an eating disorder or um, depression or, you know, um, bipolar disorder. And I think for me what that means uh, personally, like, like thinking about that, is um, I've always kind of felt like I don't necessarily fit in my body. I think I pass for something, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I pass for, like, woman, but that doesn't mean that I always feel like what woman is supposed to be. Uh, so, yeah, I I don't know. I think it's different for everybody, and I think people try to define it, or, or it, like, in feminist theory, it's it's defined in, in sociology and psychology and, and everything, and I think it's really hard to actually define it. I think the most important thing is just ask somebody, you know, uh, like, what their experience as an outsider is. I am always thinking about um, Dora Salcedo. Um, yeah, the way that she, um, the way that she conveys trauma and conveys loss and memory is just so uh, powerful to me. And I think most importantly about her work for me is that she she makes work about like these war crimes and and all of this trauma and everything. And she does not claim to be like a spokesperson, and she's really aware that this is not changing anybody's, it's not changing anything. Like the artwork is not doing anything to like help these people that have lost, you know, their families or, or people that are important to them. And it's not, you know, it's not gonna change the way the government um, sees anything, but she's still making it and she's still finding a way to, to elevate it, you know. Um, but I think it's important to realize that, you know, by memorializing something, it doesn't necessarily change anything and, and she does. I definitely go out into the world to like find inspiration. Um, for me, a lot of my research, aside from you know reading about theory and, and about art and, and talking to intellectuals, it's um, looking at you know representations of people right now, like in the media. Um, so that can be like going to the grocery store and you know observing behavior, or looking at you know the the universal like magazines that are out right now, or um, even looking at like social media and, and seeing how people are negotiating their own self-image. Um, that's really uh, kind of where I start. Um, and then I, uh, you know, I, I use photography first and then uh, printmaking and then drawing comes in uh, later. Uh, for me, it, uh, I, I like to work by myself. I don't, I, 
I don't know, I, I feel like I have an attention deficit disorder, so it's really, um, it's really pertinent that I'm by myself and able to kind of, uh, you know, zone it, uh, zone out rather, um, on my work and, um, yeah. And listening to music is great. I can't listen to like a podcast or something because I want to focus on that. You know, I can't, I can't focus on like what is happening in my work if I do that. Um, but yeah, it's it's important that I'm by myself. Um, that doesn't always happen because in grad school you run people all the time. But um, I, it's important that I. I'm alone and able to kind of think about my work and I, I need a couple days like before each um, before like the next step so like with the photography I need a couple days to look at those and to think about them and then after that uh, I need you know time after the monotype and then after the screen I need like all this time between so it really takes me like a month to like make like three or four things uh, at least successfully um, things that really say what I wanted them to say I'm reading a ton, um, but for fun, I'm reading um, Wounds of Passion by uh, Bell Hooks. Uh, it's taking me forever to get through it just because, like, like we just said, uh, reading through a ton of other material, but uh, I don't know, she's so powerful and so, like, such an inspiration. Um, and I think reading about other people's perspectives is so important to like understand all these like multiple layers of like intersecting identities, you know. Um, and she's just yeah, she's amazing. And in terms of uh, you know, do I have any material obsessions? Uh, well, when I when I'm doing like any kind of laser cutting, I um, I use I derive that from like a photographic image, and I you know I'll just kind of explore my environment and any kind of image that I use is often something that like looks like bodily like those naturally occurring um, you know whether it's stretch marks or, or those dimples or cellulite or anything like that I look for those things in nature and, and I end up finding it and that's where I uh, that's where I use that so I guess like natural materials outside just images of that is an immaterial obsession and then uh, I also uh, I'm ashamed a little bit, but I, I love like iridescent powders. All of the ink I use has it um, has iridescent powders in it, and I think that's a nod to um, you know materials found in, in makeup. Uh, that and and just like this this idea that it's like for one or the other gender, uh, and then as a way also of like uplifting this thing that is like supposedly regarded as like disgusting in our in our culture, these like uh, these bodily things that happen. Uh, I want to kind of entice the viewer with this like beautiful kind of sparkly, like glamorous thing um, applied to that the surface of the skin.